There we go. Thank you. <laughs> I was mute. <laughs> Whoopsies. Thank you. I was muted. <laughs> I thought I unmuted, but okay. Well, now I'm- now I'm here. Can you hear me now? Thank you, thank you. Um, all I was saying was that, uh... I spent the last couple hours trying to get, like, a photo slideshow going. Um, but... OBS's image slideshow thing only allows you, like, nine images at a time. And if you... If you don't specifically pick the files themselves, they just pick random photos, which is not what I want. And I have like over 60 photos to go through. Uh, so then I, right before the stream started, I was like, okay, well, if my Windows capture can't capture the Windows like photo viewer, what if I just throw them all these, what if I throw all these photos into Photoshop? Uh, and then just go through them, like, layer by layer. But silly me, uh, I just tried to open, like, 60-plus photos on Photoshop. <laughs> oh, um... That, probably not gonna do it that way either. I think I just have to... Let's see, I might be able to just go if... Hmm. We can try it right now. Let's see, if I add an image slideshow... And then we'll say, uh, manual. If I add the files myself, will this work? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, no, only 10 photos at a time. That's, that's kind of dumb. Okay, well, I guess we can do 10 photos at a time. Ooh. Uh, set myself here. Let's see. Will this- will, will the 10 even be in order? Okay. Yeah, you're good. Hold on, just one second. <laughs> just one moment. Hold on. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Hey. Sudden sudden interruption. It's someone from the aquarium is cooking. And they just wanted to know if um little creature was with me and didn't like run out <laughs> run out of the enclosure. Hey, into existence, welcome. Okay, so I guess we have to go through these 10 photos at a time, which is fine. Um, hopefully, let's see. Is it in order? Okay, good. Alright. So, okay, so then in that case, yay, we figured it out. E, let's see, um, YouTube, oh no. Um, I think it we're still in green. I think we're okay. Anyways. Welcome, welcome. Everybody. Yeah, so... I figured, um, since... Let's see. Well, I've, I've been going here and there for August. Um, 
because I've been celebrating Otter New Year all month. But I figured I'd just share, like, a couple, uh, two highlights, I guess? I also have a cup of hot tea with me. Green tea. But, uh, yeah, I'm like... I guess I'm all scattered because I was trying to set everything up and then running against the clock. <laughs> but, um, so I guess where did it begin? Um, August is... Otter New Year. There is a specific day, but... I just kind of celebrate it all month. So I've done a lot of things this month. Um, I had I had some relatives from overseas come visit, and so I was hanging out with them. Um, I think you'll re recognize, let's see, this photo? Yeah, so this photo I posted on Twitter. Yeah, I was gone for about two weeks, so this is our first stream back in two weeks. <laughs> Which is why we're just kind of... I'm kind of fumb like fumbling everywhere. Yeah. My my overseas relatives came over and I hung out with them. I took them, uh, or not that I took them, but I kind of joined them while they were doing stuff here, because I don't think- I can't remember the last time they came to visit the Float Harbor. Yeah! Yeah, it's- I've been having a lot of fun. I had a good break, but I did miss streaming and talking to you guys. <laughs> so I thought, you know, uh, this would be the perfect chance to just go over the stuff that I did and also just chat and catch up. Also, new BGM, just for a little bit. It's a free BGM I picked up today. It's called Soda Soda by, um, let me see. name in here. Hold on. Oops. Music. Uh, Nogika Chaba. And then the, the intro was by, um, Edamame88. Yeah, I thought it'd be nice to vary up the music a little bit, because I technically have three new- or three tracks that I commissioned, but I've only been able to show the one which you've heard before, Umbrella Days by Fat Bard. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I did the- this little doodle. It's actually, um, you know, it's no secret now, but I was in Vegas, uh, which is where I did this little doodle note. I was already in the hotel room when I was telling you guys that I wasn't gonna stream for the next two weeks. <laughs> um, but I went to Vegas with uh, two of my other relatives. Not the ones that came from overseas. They're two relatives that are local to Float Harbor. And I'm just gonna refer to them as Cousin 1 and Cousin 2. Cousin 1 is older by like a year. And then Cousin 2 and I are the same age. And then, um, we also had Cousin cousin Two's partner came along with us as well, so it was a group of four. But, ah, uh, so... Cousin Two and their partner were flying from out of Float Harbor um, to go to Vegas, and then myself and Cousin One took a good old car to get there. <laughs> and so, let's see. Yeah, we were staying at the Mirage. And I'll also preface this by saying uh, Cousin 1 and Cousin 2 and Cousin 2's partner, they all frequent Vegas like way more than I do. <laughs> so this trip for me was just kind of like, I'm just here and tagging along and they have stuff that they want to show me and so that was kind of it i didn't really i didn't have any sort of plan i just got to enjoy <laughs> have, being on this little trip and spending time with them because i hadn't seen cousin two and cousin two's partner in quite a long time 
Yeah, isn't it? This is actually by the front lobby, or at the, yeah, in the front lobby they have the, this little waterfall, and then the logo. So a long time, I think. I think Mirage's, um, theme has always been kind of the same, but maybe, like, has become more modernized over time. But it was always based off of, like, you know, Mirage is like, ooh, a desert, uh, jungle-y-esque vibes, kind of. In the old days, they, they're, like, not mascot, but they, a lot of their imagery used to feature, like, a white tiger, and now it's just, like, palm trees. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Cousin One and I, we drove to Vegas and we got there before Cousin Two and Cousin Two's partner. So uh, we got up to our room and then this is where I wrote the note for you guys that I was going to be gone. And then, oh, actually, about this photo. So when I drew this bottom part, it was specifically just so that when I posted the image on Twitter, I wouldn't dox myself about where I was staying, because these, like, little notepads, or the paper, is from, like, the, the hotel's notepad, so it had the hotel name and the address on the bottom. <laughs> uh, I didn't need you guys to know where I was at the time, but now I'm not there, so... It's all good now, I can tell you the secrets. Anyways, this, like, notepad paper was actually pretty pretty nice. It was like almost like a water watercolor watercolor paper and it had a nice texture. Anyway, so I drew this in the room. I was uh, by myself for a little bit cuz cousin 1 had a had a spa appointment. And so this is what the room looked like. You can kind of see my backpack and like, I already threw my stuff on the chair. Um, trying to get a pic of the room. And there's like the snack bar and the uh, mini fridge. And this white thing that my head is next to with the little blue stripe. It's like some sort of um, air filter. Because I guess the floor we were on was specifically like a non-smoking room. Or a non-smoking floor. Which was really nice. It was it smelled clean. And then this was another look, or another dis uh, yeah, another perspective of the bar and the TV. So the TV automatically just had, um, like an aquarium setup going with some, like, I guess, uh, spa-ish music <laughs> for when you walked in the room. Yeah, it was very nice. Very clean. And then, I actually, so I'm not 100% sure, but I think the the aquarium... Actually, I could be wrong. I don't think it's the same one. But in the front lobby of the Mirage, they have like a big, big aquarium right behind the place where you check in. And I thought maybe like, oh, is it... Is this aquarium like footage from the one in the front desk? But I don't think it is. It looks... It's a lot smaller. <laughs> no, I didn't drink the Fiji water. That's a trap. Cause all, <laughs> all Vegas hotels, they like are kind of hoping that you'll drink their water or eat their snacks, but then they charge. If you even like pick it up sometimes, they have sensors, so then they'll just automatically charge the room. So we did not touch the snack bar. We brought in our own water and brought our own food and stuff later. Yeah, the snack bar is booby-trapped, exactly! <laughs> yeah, that would have been cool if it was the live view of the aquarium, but I think they would have had to, I don't know, angle it in a certain way, because the, the aquarium is quite big. And it wouldn't look like this, because you can see here in the TV, like, you can see the bottom and the top of the aquarium. But this aquarium at the front lobby is, like, gigantic, so I don't think you would have gotten, like, a view like that on a widescreen TV. It would have just all been, like, fish and coral. And then these are the beds. So Cousin One and I stayed on the left one, 
um, I was closest to the window, so I was on the furthest on the left. And then Cousin 2 and Cousin 2's partner took the bit on the right when they came in. But um, after Cousin 1 finished their, their little spa appointment, we went down to the restaurant. There's several restaurants here at this hotel that we stayed at, and I actually, part of the reason why it was like setting up and taking a bit besides like trying to figure out how to get the photos all set up on OBS. I was also uh, rewriting notes so I would remember like all the all the restaurant names and where they were and what we ate because what what good is uh, is a travel vlog or just chatting if I don't remember like everything <laughs> and I'm, I'm like I'm and I'm the and I'm able to uh, tell you all the details of the things that I ate. Because, just to be clear, even though we're, we were in Vegas, I don't... <laughs> I'm not the kind of otter that likes to go to clubs or uh, gamble. So really the only thing for me to do in Vegas is like eat and shop and other things. <laughs> Well, I mean, I should have probably just taken notes while I was on vacation, so I would remember, or so I wouldn't forget in the moment, but um, I did not do that because I was just too busy enjoying myself and then just thought, like, I'll remember, or I'll be able to look up the menus and stuff online when I get back home. Which, to be fair, I did, but it still took, like, <laughs> quite a bit of digging. Because I think some of the restaurants we visited, they change up their menu a little bit. So I was like, look, we'll get to it later, but there's a restaurant we went to. And I was looking for this one dish that we got and I couldn't find it on the menu. I don't remember what it was called, but I kind of remember like what it's based off of or like um, what was sort of in it. So I can at least tell you that much, but I tried to get as much details as possible. So hopefully I don't skip out on anything. But, so let's see. So our first restaurant that we went to um, was an Italian restaurant down in the Mirage Lobby-ish area, or like the casino area. It was called Osteria Costa. And so this was the first thing we got to eat, was focaccia bread with some olive oil and, I believe, um, some vinaigrette. I love focaccia bread. And also, I had been avoiding um, carbs as much as possible <laughs> prior to this trip. Uh, so, but I wasn't gonna let myself, you know, not enjoy eating. Because that was like really the only thing that I was kind of <laughs> there for in Vegas, other than, you know, obviously spending time with my family. So this was the focaccia bread. It was very fluffy. The top was like nice and crisp. And I think that's thyme. Or there's uh, thyme or... Yeah, it's probably thyme and rosemary. That's my guess. The top was nice and crispy and then the inside was nice and fluffy. Uh, so since it was just me and Cousin One, we decided to pick two different things and then just split it. So, this is the olive vodka pasta with some parmesan cheese on top. There's also shrimp in there, you can't really see it. But an olive vodka is like the... If you've ever seen pasta, or they call it like the pink sauce, quote unquote. But it's just like a tomato-based sauce with like some kind of cream, which makes it like a light orangey color. And that's... I mean, it's orange, but they call it pink for some reason. And then we also got a pork chop with some veggies on it. Or specifically, Italian roast pork chop. <laughs> No special drinks here at this time, we just had water because we had just driven, so I think we were just like not trying to stay up any longer, we just wanted to get our food and then go back up into the room and call it a night. 
Oh, you're waiting for Cousin 2 and Cousin 2's partner. And let me see. Oh, we also did not get dessert here, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. This whole stream is just going to be me talking about food the entire time because we didn't really have a chance to go shopping either. So it was literally just like eating non-stop <laughs> for like three days. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought the little creature was walking around, but he's sitting back in his bed. I think he's decided he's going to chill. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm so sorry. I wish I could share food with you through the screen, you know? Or like maybe in the far future they'll have like, I don't know, you, you'll like look at the screen and then you'll be able to taste the food. <laughs> And now, let's see, so I- th oh, okay, no. So we didn't get dessert here at this restaurant, but then, uh, Cousin One wanted to show me this place, which is at a different hotel. So we ended up walking out of the hotel and going to, uh, across the street to the Venetian. And the Venetian is kind of like... It's... I guess, like, the best way to describe it is that it's kind of, like, Italy-inspired, roughly. But the, so the, the store that we were going to specifically was called Dandelion, and it's a chocolate store. Like, they specifically just specialize in chocolate. Now, this is the outside of it. It looks very, uh, very minimalistic, but also, like, I like the colors. And, I don't know, this window shot is, I thought was, like, really cute. You can see, um, kind of in the background, so some of the stuff they have on display were, like, books about chocolate and, like, cooking or baking with chocolate. <laughs> I try I try to take as many aesthetically pleasing photos as I possibly can. <laughs> so I'm glad you think so. Um but apparently you found out so I thought Well, I I had asked one of the employees inside if Dandelion was only if this was the only location, and it turns out there's another one in San Francisco. So if you're ever in San Francisco or in Vegas, and you want some chocolate, I recommend going to Dandelion because a lot of their specialty stuff was really, really good. Like, all the chocolate was very rich. So, for this time around, I got the the cold drink right here. That's a, a Nibby Horchata. So if you don't know what a horchata is, it's a, it's a Mexican rice-based drink with cinnamon. But this one by Dandelion has also almonds, hazelnuts, and cocoa nibs. And also with every drink, they gave you like a little cookie. So the if you can see like the little gray package <laughs> next to the big package, it's like the free cookie that came with my drink. And it kind of was like not a it, it it kind of reminded me of like gingerbread, but it wasn't a ginger it didn't have like that same spice flavor. So I guess it's just like some kind of shortbread cookie. But it was good. And I think so we did come back to Danley Land later, and I have a different photo for that on a different day. But I think between the two days, the horchata that I had was probably the better of everything else, <laughs> or the best thing that I had from here. My brain's really not working today. <laughs> and I didn't even go to the gym. I just have a lot to prepare for, even after this. <laughs> 
my work is not over, but this is a fun little break to just chat and catch up with you guys. Um, so the other drink, the hot drink, that's Cousin One's drink. And Cousin One had, um, I think just a hot chocolate and not a, not a mocha, because they were saying that they were like really tired and they just wanted to go to bed and not stay up. So no coffee, just chocolate. Just hot chocolate. And then the the thing that's in the brown package, that was um, something else I also picked up because when I saw it in the little dessert bar, I was like, okay, this is probably the most interesting thing to me personally. So I got the Miso Blondie, so you can kind of see what it looks like. It's got toasted walnuts, white miso, chocolate chips, and cocoa nibs. And if you don't know what a blondie is, it's basically just a brownie, but without the... I guess, like, it's not brown from the cocoa powder. So it's just like a... I guess like a white cake. Cake, with quotes, <laughs> in quotation marks. It's, it's a brownie, but it's just not brown. It's a blonde. <laughs> I thought this was pretty good. I was hoping... Personally, that the white miso flavor would be a little bit stronger um, because I think that combination of sweet and salty would have been really nice. But it tasted more sweet than salty. In fact, I couldn't even really taste the miso too much, which I guess is a good thing for people who aren't like too fond of miso as a flavor. <laughs> Noni, I would feed it to you if I could. <laughs> or maybe you, now that you know what's in it, you can just look up a recipe for something similar. <laughs> but yeah, they had some other stuff, as you can see, but... Um, it's just like a chocolate scone, some like little... I think they were like lava cakes, that little, that little cake on the left. Like, they heat it up and it has, like, the fudge inside. But all I had was this miso blondie, and that was our dessert for the day. <laughs> There's a lot more Noni, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I hope, um, I hope it's just, like, you know, the part of eating is not just, like, the taste itself, but also the the texture and like eating with your eyes so I hope in at least even if you can't eat the food um, you'll be able to enjoy it with your eyes <laughs> yeah miso I've actually had so this wasn't during the trip but um, a while ago I saw a video for some like gochujang cookies and gochujang is like the um, Korean spicy paste, Kore Korean spicy chili paste that they put on like a lot of different foods. But someone made a recipe where you mix the gochujang and the cookie, and so you get that same like umami sweet combination, which I think is what they were trying to do here with this miso blondie, but. Uh, it, it was good, but not... I wanted a little more of that experience of tasting both the sweet and the savory. Oh, good! <laughs> Snack time while watching me talk about food. <laughs> and so let's see, and that was day one. After that, we just walked back to our hotel, um, which I think I have... Oh. Wait, where's where's the photo? This is only one, two, only five. Oh, was that ten? Wow. Okay, hold on. Now we gotta change up the photos then. Aye. Okay, gotta clear all of these. Oh. Oh no. Okay. Because I tried initially putting all the photos in, and it's only showing ten. For some reason, the all of them are still in here, so I have to. Yeah. Gotta get rid of them one by one. I have no idea if 
this is... Is it working? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Okay, wait. What if... Okay, we'll do this the easy way. Just delete the whole thing. And then make a new one. Slideshow. Manual. And then just put in the new photos. Okay, so we went through... 10, so the next 10 would be 11 through 20. Wow. And then we gotta resize it. up the music to Umbrella Days. I'm just gonna keep switching back and forth so it's not the same sound every time for you. E okay. Here we go. Back to good old Umbrella Days. And then we'll go back to Soda Soda later. <laughs> but yeah, this was the view of our hotel walking back from the Venetian. Um, <laughs> caught at sunset. This was um, literally before the storm. Not in a <laughs> not in the metaphor metaphorical sense, but actually in the literal sense, because it started to rain on our second day there. So, unfortunately um, for me, I didn't get to go swimming in the pool, but I did get to go to the spa later which I'll talk about. Didn't take any pictures at the spa, uh, for obvious reasons, but that was what I did on day two, I think, or was it day three? Oh no, it might have been day three, because day two I went to the gym. So yeah, so uh, this was the end of day one, walking back after having chocolate at the Venetian at Disneyland. So the next morning, I woke up very, very, very early. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The grind doesn't stop, even on vacation. <laughs> uh, I guess because I, I wanted to have some solo time before uh, we went about our day. I went down by myself at like 6 a.m. and this restaurant was the f only one open at the time. It's called The Pantry, also at the Mirage. And there was literally no one there. I was only I was the only person who was there um, or like one of the first people to show up. Um, and there were some people coming down to like get breakfast to take back up to their room. But I was like one of the few people who asked to eat at the restaurant. And actually, <laughs> I walked up to the front and then there was, um, there was a lady standing at the front of the restaurant. And you know, I asked her for like a table for one. And she's like, oh, well, do you want to sit at the bar? And I was like, oh, can I? And she was like, well, as long as you're over 21, you can. And I was like, oh. I, I am over 21 <laughs> and she was like oh okay and she did she didn't even ID check me she just let me go so I got to sit at the bar uh, I didn't have the whole bar to myself there was someone else there later but pretty much entirely empty and so this was my view from my seat at the bar <laughs> I didn't have any drinks because it was, um, I mean, I don't mind drinking, but I'm not a big drinker to begin with either. Yeah, it was really nice, actually, because I, I got to chat a little bit with people and just have some, like, quiet solo time. I just got to enjoy the morning. It was really nice. Yeah, exactly, the vibes. <laughs> 
So then, I had... I... Uh... So the pantry, I think, is uh, geared... It's um, American cuisine. And I am a big, big lover of... I think if you had to ask me what my favorite meal of the day is, it's definitely breakfast. And then if you asked me what kind of breakfast I like, um, I love traditional American breakfast. <laughs> so I had this omelette. This was the chef's omelette with wheat toast and some uh, fried potatoes and also a cup of coffee and water. But in the so the chef's omelette, you could pick three different ingredients of your choice to put in. So I chose mushrooms, spinach, and sausage. Uh, I think it was um, like an Italian sausage. And I think they made it with like two or three eggs. Yeah, I love a good omelette. It was just like nice and fluffy. But I, I specifically wanted to get uh, a good hearty breakfast before I went to the gym because I can't work out on an empty stomach. <laughs> Noni, I would cook you an omelette. But yeah, the, the server was asking me if I wanted... Um, the, the server was, I think because I was like one of the few people there, he just kept coming around to check on me and ask if I needed anything. So it was very sweet. He was like, oh, do you want jelly for your toast? Do you want, uh, do you want more water? Do you want another cup of coffee? <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'm good. I'm good, thank you. And I think around, um, when I was pretty much, like, almost finished with my meal, Cousin One came down because, uh, she also woke up. And so she, she was just telling me, uh, what our, I guess our itinerary, itinerary for the day is going to be. So, um, I had had my breakfast, and then me and Cousin Two's partner were going to hit the gym. And then I think... Hmm, I can't remember if Cousin Two had any plans or if they were still sleeping in. And then Cousin One, I think, might have had another spa appointment. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, I think the biggest plan for the day was that we were gonna get um, all-you-can-eat <laughs> Japanese barbecue. And then there was a, another restaurant that we had reservations for for dinner so we had some time in between I think to just kind of do whatever we wanted to do yeah so after um, after I had this breakfast I went to the gym and I was in the gym for like <laughs> two and a half hours <laughs> uh, I just was really enjoying um, <laughs> it, it is because, so normally when I go to the gym, I feel like I'm always on a time crunch because I've got other things to do and it's just kind of like, you know, I enjoy going to the gym, but I don't get to enjoy it leisurely all the time. So this was also my first time using like hotel facilities. So I was like, wow, hotel gym, so fancy, so cool. And I just was like talking to people uh, while working out and um, listening to music. It was really nice. But um, somehow, <laughs> because I was in the gym for so long, or like I had woken up early, I had only gotten like five hours of sleep. So. I'm surprised I was able to function. I guess it was because I had had a big breakfast that my body had the energy to keep going. <clears throat> so then, let me see. 
Like, oh, yeah. And then, okay, so, right, after the gym, Cousin One came and checked up on me. <laughs> A big breakfast does the opposite for you? Well, to be fair, um, once you see, like, the next place that we went to eat, well, I- okay, I- we- I- we ate a lot, and after- after we had eaten, like, Cousin 1, Cousin 2, and Cousin 2's partner, um, when we got back to the hotel, they all knocked out except for me, and I just was, like, sitting there awake. But I'll explain, um, first of all. <laughs> So, after the gym, we went to the all-you-can-eat oh, Japanese barbecue. This is 888. And this place apparently is like so popular. They open at 11, and we were driving up there at around like 10.40ish a.m. And there was already a line like out the door, or just like standing in front of the door. So, they hadn't even opened yet, and they were already busy. So we quickly, like, ran over and got in line. But, um, so the way that this Japanese barbecue works is that they have different set menus. Like, diff uh, the menus have different types of items on it. And then you, as a table, decide on which menu you want to eat, uh, you want to pick. And then once you've decided on a menu, that's like the only menu that you will be able to choose from for the entire meal. But it's all you can eat, so the price is per person. I think it was about like, I want to say 32 something dollars per person, if not more. And then that, you know, not including tip and stuff. But then you have a good, I think, 90 minutes to eat as much as you want. Yeah, the quality was really good. So, I have a couple of photos. <laughs> here's, here's some meat. You know, I, I do have, um, you know, I, I can't look at this and tell you off the bat, like, what I know. It's obvious, this is obviously beef, but I don't know, like, which of the beef or, like, what part of the beef it is. And I have, like, three photos of, like, this meat, or different kinds of meat that we had. So... I think some of uh, this is like the thing in the aluminum. That's like the. I think that was supposed to be garlic butter. But yeah. So out of you know they generally it, it all look, kind of looks the same. So it's just like I just need a couple good photos of the meat. And then I'll show you just how much meat we ate because we got the we got to keep the receipt at the end and the receipt is very long. <laughs> So, lots of meat. Um, my cousins had- my cousins and my cousin's partner, they had alcohol and I chose to just have a canned peach tea. <laughs> yeah, I believe that's a short rib. You'd be correct. Um, I know- I don't know if it's- if what I'm looking at right now, the, the one that's the red meat, I don't know if that's beef tongue, but I think the one in the back is actually pork. But I don't know what kind of pork it is. Let's see, this one I think is also... This one might all be beef. And then this one is also beef, I believe. Yeah, uh, me and my family, big fan of beef at all you can eat. It's the shape of tongue. I feel like tongue is usually in light in color. Are you talking about when it's like after it's cooked? Because I think normally when it's um, raw, it's just like red like this. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell. And I can't remember. All I remember is that it all went down into my belly. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, we just ate a lot of meat. Uh, and then... We also had dessert, so we got to cook some s'mores over the a little barbecue pit. <laughs> so there's my s'more. Yeah, they they gave you like a like a little um what do you call it? Like the little stick 
but and then we each got a marshmallow and two crackers and some chocolate. Let's go out for Italian ice after all I can eat meat. Ooh. That sounds good. We did go... <laughs> so, despite all the food that we ate, we did go elsewhere to get drinks. Um, not, uh, not like alcohol drinks, but like tea, boba drinks. But anyway, so we were, I think we were there for the entire time limit, pretty much, because... Oh, the photo's not in here. It's time for the next batch of photos. Okay, so, oops. Let's see. out so I can put in the new ones. Okay. So then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the receipt from the Korean or the Japanese barbecue place. For size reference, this is my upper thigh. This receipt was just a tad longer than my thigh. <laughs> so yeah, you can see like all the things that we ordered are zero dollars because it's, you know, the, the price is per person. So let's see here. I'm gonna have to zoom in a little. Yeah, someone had a Yuzu Mojito. I think that was Cousin 2 at the Yuzu Mojito. Oh yes, $32.95 per person. So Cousin 2 had the Yuzu Mojito, which I had a sip of. Very good. Um, one can tea, peach, that was me. One Calpico Highball, that was Cousin 1. That was also really good. Super smooth. What's Kiss of Fire? I think it was... Oh, um, Kiss of Fire was like a, one of their specialty sushi rolls. And it had like a... I think it was spicy tuna with like a jalapeno slice and like a, some sort of hot sauce. That was really good. I love spicy food. Let's see. Yeah, one garlic tuna roll. Four snow crab pieces, uh, four salmon carpaccios, um, oh yeah, limit per one. The same with the snow crab. <laughs> you too, Keiko. Let's go, spicy food. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I should have put a warning for, for all the spicy, or for all the, the food. Um, let's see. Eight beef, <laughs> eight beef tongue servings, one spicy pork belly, four filet mignons, four harami miso, uh, one king oyster mush, one order of king oyster mushroom, some extra wasabi, and then the sushi ginger, two pink rolls, which I think was like a salmon or shrimp. That's why they called it pink roll, I think. I had ordered some sesame oil with sea salt to dip the meat in. And I think cousin cousin one also had that as well. Or maybe it was cousin two's partner. Oh yeah, oh yeah, cousin one had the Japanese pickle set. And then one bowl of rice, the kiss of fire, ribeye steak, <laughs> uh, LA Calbi, um, two beef belly tar tear? One spicy garlic cabbage, garlic butter, uh, prime hanger beef, pork toro, yaki shabu beef, tofu steak, corn cheese, pineapple, jalapeno, miso paste, red chili paste. Oh yeah, cousin two's partner had this 888 special draft beer. And we had one fatty rib, and cousin two had the spicy crunch ramen. That's a lot of zeros? Yeah, because it's all you can eat, and the only thing that we paid for was, um, how many- 
how many people were in the party, which was four of us. It was me, cousin one, cousin two, and cousin two's partner. Yeah, this is the whole receipt. And then I obviously cut off the... and hit all the little details that you're not supposed to see. <clears throat> I took this photo in the car after we had eaten everything. Yeah, corn cheese. Corn cheese is really good. Also, welcome, Alden. <laughs> uh, I like corn cheese, but I also... Um, am, because of my slight lactose intolerance, I try not to eat a lot of dairy if I can avoid it. So, skipped out on the corn cheese. But, we went to a boba place after this. Yeah, amazing, right? We ate all this food and then we still go to get boba drinks after. <laughs> So we went to a place called, um, let me see, China Fresh Tea, and this was my drink. Isn't the cup pretty? I like the, the art that they put on it. So this was my drink. It was a avocado smoothie with yogurt. And it was also, I think it looks kind of small at this angle, but you know, with maybe if you look at your hand. It's kind of big. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Alden. Avocado smoothie. I know you don't like avocado. <laughs> but I love avocado and smoothies. and uh, So much, in fact, that I had two avocado smoothies on this trip. It was this one and then another one later. A different one. But yeah, this was a, a big ol' A big old cup. But yeah, avocado, like as a as a sweet. Um, so wait, I think we reached another thirty minutes. I think. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep the the music interesting, or maybe even an hour. Goodness, I'm trying to keep the music interesting for you guys, so I'm switching it up between two tracks. <laughs> yes, it was delicious, Alden. But yes, uh, avocado, like as a sweet, is pretty common for Southeast Asian cuisine. So, nothing, nothing new for me. But I know for people who aren't used to, who either don't like avocado or just only like it having it as like a savory thing. Uh, I know avocado. <laughs> Avocado smoothie sounds kind of weird. Yeah. And so then after this, I think we went back to the hotel. And then cousin one, cousin two, and cousin two's partner all took a nap. And then I was just like, on my phone. <laughs> and I was looking out the window because it started to s it started raining. We I didn't get any pictures like outside our our room, but. Um, it was it was raining pretty hard, and there was even lightning. Um, to the point that actually, lightning struck twice right outside our window. <laughs> it was very uh, very cool to see. Yeah, the hurricane. <laughs> the aquarium came to me. Aquarium is always wherever I go. But yeah, um, you know once. Once the three of them had slept it off, and I was still awake the entire time, you know, I had, I was telling them like, yo, it's like raining and thundering outside, and cousin one like looked me straight in the eyes and was like, you want to walk across the street and go get hot chocolate again at Dandelion? <laughs> and I was like, bro, it just crashed thunder outside, you want to go walk out for chocolate? <laughs> And so we did. We walked outside. <laughs> so here's a view of us, uh, the view of us crossing the street. Here's the Venetian, and you can see the wind and Encore and Treasure Island. But yeah, we got to Dandelion. And this time, because of the weather, I had, um, I also had a hot chocolate as well. But, um, I didn't just get any regular hot chocolate. 
Also, you can kind of see it. I'm gonna zoom in. But the for the hot drinks, the sleeve for the hot drinks, you can see there's a little pocket here. This little tiny pocket that the plant is kind of covering. It's empty, but it's only empty because I ate the cookie that was in there already before I took the picture. <laughs> so yeah, you you get you get a little a little little goody with your drink. And I already ate mine. And for anyone who missed the, the first part, um, when I mentioned day one going to Dandelion, um, the cookie is kind of like a short, short, uh, shortbread type of cookie. Almost akin to like a gingerbread, but it didn't have the spice, which is why I'm pretty sure it's not a gingerbread cookie. But yeah, it's like a little tiny cookie. And the, oh, they also had on the at the bar if you had a hot chocolate or i guess even if you you didn't get hot chocolate you could get like um fresh cut marshmallows to put in your drink which i should have done but i didn't i was foolish i, I just wanted my little cookie and my hot chocolate and I'm too excited for cookie so i think i have um, a photo of the menu oh yeah do they advertise it as fresh cut no, um, but it just was kind of like out on the bar and then they're not like, you know, the marshmallows that you get at the store are kind of like the pillowy, like the pillow, puffy, like pill shaped. Uh, these marshmallows were like cut like square. So it's like, you could tell it was like the kind that they like, you know, you pour out and then you just cut it into pieces. Um, yeah, QB boys. So this is a tiny look at the menu. Uh, so the hot chocolate that I got is it was the Mission hot chocolate. So it had some spices in it. It was not like hot spicy, but like flavor spicy. <laughs> it was very good, but not as good as the horchata. The horchata I think was still my favorite thing. I mean, not that I think it was my favorite thing from this place. And not that I've been to Dandelion before, but um, personally, for me, if I frequent like the same place more than once, unless I'm specifically craving like one item, I always try to pick something different if, you know, the, the quality has been consistent. You don't like horchata either, Alden? No. <laughs> Alden, why? <laughs> oh, not a big rice fan either. Yeah, I get. Like I said I. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not very. Um, it's a pun. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm not I'm not very picky, so I'm I'm open to a lot of different flavors and things. You know, aside from uh, cilantro. <laughs> cilantro and um lemongrass, I guess. Yeah, so I think um Part of, other than like wanting to get hot chocolate for the weather, we were also just killing some time before our reservation for dinner. And so we were kind of walking around the Venetian and looking at like different uh, stuff that they had there. And actually, we found um, on day one when cousin one and I, oh, it's not a, <laughs> it's not a receipt, it's a, it's a menu. Oh my gosh, if I had ordered that much chocolate, I think I would um, not be here right now. <laughs> I'd be in chocolate heaven. Uh, but on day one, when Cousin One and I were initially walking around the Venetian, um, we found this like really fancy donut place. And so since we were back here with Cousin Two and Cousin Two's partner, we showed them... Um, we wanted to show it to them because we were like, yo, these donuts are like super, super fancy. And Cousin 2 didn't get anything at Dandelion. 
So we thought maybe like, oh, she'd probably like um, this donut place. So this is um, Donutique. So Donut Boutique. Donutique. <laughs> and they had a bunch of different flavors. But yeah, you can see like how fancy they are. Whoa. So I didn't get anything from here. Um, they were just like very beautiful to look at. And because I had already gotten a hot chocolate from Dandelion, I was like, I cannot. As much as I want to indulge in like more sweets, I, I probably should not. I can have a little bit of control. <clears throat> so, um, there were more flavors than this, but I only got this one photo. I should have taken a picture of the other side. But you can kind of see... Let's see. So we have the French vanilla. It's like pretty simple. Just a little vanilla bean pod and some vanilla, uh, I assume just like some sugar icing. And then the, a boutique sprinkle. I guess it's just like their sprinkled donut. I don't know if it had a particular flavor. Oh, vanilla glaze sprinkle. Um, and then this yellow one in the back with the honeycomb. <laughs> it's expensive enough I'd try one but not come back unless I have a Food Wars tier reaction. Yeah, um, I, if I was gonna pick one, I probably would have picked something that was both, like, really visually stunning and then also, like, a flavor profile that I'd like. So, actually, out of these, um, Cousin 2 didn't pick any of these. She got the strawberry cheesecake, and I didn't take a photo of it. Because, you know, that was that was her dessert. Um, and I didn't think it was, like, as decorated as nicely as some of these other ones. It was just kind of like a donut with pink frosting and, like, a little dried strawberry. Um, or dehydrated strawberry on top. And uh, Cousin 2 did let me have a piece of her donut. And it tasted like strawberry pocky. <laughs> like, in a good way. But I think personally, yeah, not actual cheesecake. I mean, there might have been um, some cheesecake. Like, I don't know how they would have incorporated the cheesecake in it, but at least the piece that I got, it was mostly just like the, the strawberry filling and the strawberry icing on top. But let me see here. I think if I was gonna get one, I would have gotten either this blueberry one, blueberry yuzu, or this banana, the banana, the banana one, right? It's like simple in terms of decoration, but I love caramelized banana. So I probably would have opted for that. And you can kind of see this one. Oh, maybe that's the strawberry cheesecake in the back. You can kind of see here. There's a donut with like a little cake at the top. That's not the strawberry cheesecake, it's the one behind it. It's the pink donut behind it with the strawberry. The one with the cake slice is like a, a birthday donut, <laughs> which was very cute, but um, it was not my birthday, so I did not get the birthday donut. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, you know, when you're on vacation, uh, you should let yourself- allow yourself to try new things. So, this was the only photo I got, though. There was a lot more, um, other flavors that sounded interesting, but I think this side of the counter had, like, the more visually interesting donuts. Which is why I took the picture of this one. <clears throat> and then we walked back to the hotel in the rain again. <laughs> it was raining and windy. So the storm, the storm was a brewing. So I have several shots. I mean, I only have two. So there was this one, and then on the other side of the street, um, I think this was, or yeah. Wait. 
Oh yeah, so this was from the Venetian, and then this was when we were on the other side of the street. Yeah, I'm getting closer to the Mirage. And then this is the photo that I used for my thumbnail for today's video. Thought it was a good, like, Vegas photo, you know? It's got the strip and the lights. <laughs> And so we were heading back to the hotel because we were then headed for our next reservation for dinner. And you know, at this point, uh, we're still like super full from the uh, from the Japanese barbecue. So, like, I was only moderately hungry but that was fine because the restaurant that we went to we kind of just shared everything and everything that we ordered was like shareable plates and they came in like small quantities so this was the place it's called sparrow and wolf this must be the place sparrow and wolf um you know i'm not a <laughs> when i saw the the logo of the restaurant like at the top of the restaurant I was like man why did they graphic <laughs> graphic design is my passion I wish they would have just used a different font I like I think the wolf font looks good sparrow fonts a little a little too much <laughs> You gotta move on to the next 10 photos. Just give me one moment while I clear all of these. <laughs> they partnered with Papyrus. Um, let me see. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. Okay. Whoa. Where are you going, photo? Alrighty. So, this was the drink that I had from Sparrow and Wolf. It was a mocktail. Because, again, I'm not a big drinker, and so um, this was the first Vegas trip that I had been in a long time. And I think mocktails are starting to become more of a more of a regular thing now. I'm starting to see them more on menus, which makes me happy. Because I, you know, I don't mind drinking sometimes, but... You know, I'd, I'd rather have like a, a little fancy, a little fancy something. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this, the mocktail, is on the left, and then I don't remember what kind of um, drink or what's in the drink on the right, but that was Cousin Two's drink, which was uh, an alcoholic drink. Uh, but my mocktail on the left. It was called the Too Easy. It was made with sugar snap pea, chamomile tea, and then shaken with yuzu, mint, and sparkling water. <laughs> it looks like frozen lemonade. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? But there was alcohol in that. So But I don't I also don't think it was a lemonade base. I think the lemon was just like a I mean, it could have been. I could be totally wrong. But yeah, and then also, like, this this lighting. So, I think this was... It was, like, super, super dark in this restaurant. And so, um, a lot of these photos are gonna be kind of... Uh, maybe a little bit harder to see. The only reason why this photo is like, lit like this is because we were trying to take photos, and then someone was like, Oh, what if... Like I can be, I can be your lighting, and then they they would take their phone and turn on, the, <laughs> turn on the um, the flashlight on their phone, so someone else could take the picture of the food. But we we ended up not doing that for like every photo. 
because we just like also wanted to eat. So this was... Um, I think we ordered everything at once and then uh, the food just started kind of coming uh, like in, in batches. So I think this was like the first batch, quote, quote unquote. So we have here the Oyster Duo. It's called the Oyster Duo because there's the, the chilled oysters and then the grilled oysters. So chilled and grilled. So the chilled oysters had, um, a, it's the, on the menu when I looked, uh, like, today, it says chilled aji amarillo hot sauce and lemon. And then the grilled one was, um, oysters, charcoal grilled, basted in miso spinach butter with chorizo breadcrumbs. So out of the two, um, I think the... The charcoal grilled ones were better. And then let's see. I don't have too much to say about this dish just because it's like, oh, they're oysters. You know, they're kind of, kind of fancy, but also like, I don't know. It, it was good. Have too much to comment on it. <laughs> Oysters. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Standard otter feed. You really gotta you really gotta wow me with these oysters. Um, and then next, this was some oxtail hummus with naan bread. And the plate in the back. This was the thing that I was looking for on the menu that I couldn't find. Because um, I think this place will switch uh, switch up their menu a little bit every once in a while. But um, if I remember correctly, it was like some sort of noodle wrap with like a like a meat, a type of meat, minced meat inside. And it was supposed to be like this entire restaurant is like Vietnamese fusion. <laughs> Um, uh, well, I mean, it was still hummus, like, made with chickpeas, but they just put oxtail on the top. <laughs> but yeah, I think... So between these two things, the oxtail hummus was, like, the definite winner. And in fact, I feel like the oxtail hummus was probably, like, my one of my favorite things that I had from this restaurant. The... The thing in the back um, was kind of like, it was, it was alright. Nothing that I was too crazy for. Oh, noni. Vietnamese food. Mm. Vietnamese food has a good range, I think. I can't speak uh, personally, but, you know, um, Vietnamese food is kind of similar to Lao food, which I have more experience with. And Lao food is like a lot of sour and spicy flavors. I think Vietnamese food has less sour food and more savory. So savory spicy. <laughs> and then... Oh. Yeah, so again, speaking of Vietnamese fusion, so this thing was also something I couldn't find on the menu, um, but I remember specifically, uh, it was like uh, some kind of pork and cucumber and carrots and like the pickled veggies, because it was supposed to be based off of or like inspired by like banh mi, which is like a Vietnamese sandwich. But rather than a baguette, they used um, Japanese milk bread. So it was like really crispy on the outside, and then the you would bite into it, and then it was like very soft. So this was basically like a deconstructed banh mi. <laughs> also very small. I think... 
this one had uh, a good good texture because of that Japanese milk bread. And you know, the, the soft meat and then the crunchy pickled vegetables. So this one had a good balance of like what I kind of want to experience when I go out for like fancy food, fancy quote unquote. <laughs> dinner experience, whatever you want to call it. Oh, my tea's already cold. Yeah, um, I mean, I would say it was higher, higher tier fancy, but we went to a, an even fancier place because the price point between this one and the one we went to on our third day was different. I think the experience was a little bit different as well. But also, I won I'm almost wondering if I didn't enjoy Sparrow and Wolf as much because uh, of the fact that I was like still kind of full from the Japanese barbecue. <laughs> so maybe my experience would have been a little bit different if I had gone in hungry. Or, you know, maybe I, maybe I would have been like, even I, I would have been more dissatisfied because I would have wanted, I would have wanted to eat more food if I was hungry because I can eat a lot. <laughs> and like, if you know, if you've been checking out like the quantity of like how much food is provided in like each plate, it's not a lot. And we're sharing this among like four people, so we're all just getting a little bit of each dish here and there. <clears throat> and so then these, these are um, also something I couldn't find on the menu again. This is birria dumplings. So I thought these were, uh, I thought they were all right. They tasted good. Oh no, your chat's delayed. It's gotta, gotta catch up. <laughs> yeah, birria dumplings, you heard me correct. Correctly. <laughs> like I said, uh, fusion food. Yeah, I, I did like that the... You know, it was it. You experienced it with like the soupy, the soupy base. So it wasn't like just a a dumpling. But also, <laughs> they make Bria everything these days. Bria hurts me. Tell me, oh no, not your tummy hurty. I'm sure you could have found, uh, you would have found something that you could eat from this menu. <laughs> but yeah, I also don't have too much to say about these either. I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like, a birria dumpling. And then this, this is, sorry for like the awful quality, <laughs> but this is a Japanese sweet potato with, let me see, I wrote it down, some ume creme fraiche. Chinese sausage and scallions. This was my s the other favorite dish from this place. <laughs> I don't. I I think it's just because I personally really, really, really like potatoes, and sweet potatoes are like my weakness. So this was just a really good like savory, sweet, sweet potato. Oh, it's so good. It's delicious. I love sweet potatoes. Yeah, and then the, the textures too. There was like the the Chinese sausage was like kind of crunchy, and the scallions were also like crunchy. The creme fraiche was like savory, and then the sweet potato was like roasted nicely, so it was like soft and fluffy. Yeah, potatoes are amazing. Let me see. And then, oh yeah, we were. We were way too full <laughs> by this point, and we technically already had dessert, 
so... Uh, no dessert for us. I think we just went back to the hotel and then, like, knocked out. And, you know, by this point, I only had five hours of sleep, I ate a whole bunch of food, and then I worked out for, like, two and a half hours. So, I was ready for bed. I was... I was a... I was a... <laughs> I was a... Very content, little otter. But, somehow, I still only slept six hours that night. And so, this is from the next morning. This time, uh, we decided to get breakfast together. But this is, this, this purple thing, this is the, the, I think it's the MGM? It's the MGM, uh, orb. The, the Las Vegas orb. Basically, it's just like a big studio that's an orb, and they display, they usually display, like, stuff on it. But because it was so early in the morning, um, and by so early, it's like probably six or seven, no, seven or eight o'clock, I think. Um, no, no one, no one's around, so they're, they're not displaying anything on the orb. It was just a purple orb. But at night, I didn't get a picture of it, but at night, they would display, like, the moon on the orb. So it just looked like the moon is, like, in the middle of Las Vegas. It's kind of cool. Yeah, this was, like, the only view of it that I got. Oh, you can actually kind of see in the reflection. I didn't even notice my reflection of my shirt. I'm wearing the, the Uchu Summer Kamelin shirt. The one that... Uh, Dr. Hakase has. And speaking of Dr. Hakase, um, if you missed his stream from this morning, he played uh, Fall Guys with his community, and I was there. I was playing with the community and Dr. Hakase. Didn't get any W's, <laughs> unfortunately, but it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, uh, Doc... Doc and I haven't played a game together since Splatoon, so it's fun to play with him in the community. And everybody in Doc's community is so nice. But yeah, from our hotel, we were walking to the Wynn for breakfast, and we went to Earth Cafe, which is um, Earth, spelled like U-R-T-H, Cafe, C-A-F-F-E. It's, um... Not, not, um, it doesn't only exist in Vegas, but they have other locations as well. But we got breakfast at Earth Cafe at the Wynn. <clears throat> so, once again, I'm sorry, Alden. <laughs> Another avocado smoothie. This is uh, Earth Cafe's Vivacado smoothie which has avocado, cucumber, pineapple, mango, mint, and maple syrup. One of the things I like about Earth Cafe is that they they offer a lot of, like, healthy, quotes, in quotes, alternatives for their food. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just like avocado. I think the texture is really nice. It's creamy. Um, and then these waffles. So since I had uh, had the um, the omelet, the savory omelet from pantry the first day, I decided to go with something a little sweet. So I got their gluten-free white corn waffles with caramelized bananas and walnuts. And uh, the description on the menu says like the white corn waffles. Like, the taste is kind of akin to, like, cornbread, but it didn't taste as strongly as a cornbread, in my opinion, at least. Um, but it was still good. The texture was really nice. Another crunchy outside, soft inside moment. And then, ooh, yeah, with this caramelized bananas, also crunchy soft, and then the walnuts. Mm. And then they gave me a little thing of syrup to add, <laughs> in case I wanted a little more sweet, which I did. I just put a little bit more. 
Yeah, day three again. Um, so day three... Oh, okay. So day three, this was the day... Uh... Day three was the day that I took a nap. And <laughs> the only reason I say that is because, um... So our... We had another dinner reservation, but we also had some other plans, so... After breakfast, we went to the spa. Like, all of us went to the spa, not just Cousin One. And we hung out in there for a little bit. And then... Um... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, we went to the spa, and then Cousin One entered uh, a slot tournament at the Mirage. And so, um, Cousin One was participating in the tournament, and then Cousin 2 and Cousin 2's partner went to just go watch, because they've never been to a slot tournament before, so they were curious to see what it was like. And then me, because I had like five and six hours of sleep in the past like two days, I conked out for like four hours in the hotel room. <laughs> I was so tired after the spa. Um, but the spa was really nice, because it had a, um, it had multiple hot tubs, a sauna, and a steam room, and then, you know, like, showers and a lounge. And, oh, uh, I, I feel, I, I feel bad. I didn't utilize the snack bar at the spa when I should have, because I, you know, I, I did the jacuzzi, I did the sauna, and then I went and took a shower, and then I was like, oh boy, I'm gonna, like, get snacks in the snack bar. But after I showered, I went into, like, they have, like, a little, like, I don't know what you would call it, just, like, a room where you can, like, blow dry your hair and, like, put on lotion and, like, mouth they have mouthwash and, um, like, Q-tips for your ears and things like that. Without thinking, I just, you know, took a swig of mouthwash, and then I was like, oh, well, now that I've already washed my mouth, I don't want to eat. <laughs> so I just like chilled out in the lounge for a little bit and then eventually went up into the room and then fell asleep. Um, but after that, uh, so our plans were we had dinner plans and then Cousin 2 wanted to check out a Tiki Bar. So we went to the Tiki Bar first before our reservation for dinner. Yeah, mouthwash, stomach disappointed. So true. But to be fair, I don't think the snack bar had anything like crazy interesting. Thankfully, it was just kind of like, oh, granola and like maybe fruit and juice and tea and stuff like that. So I wasn't missing out on much. So we went to this tiki bar called the Golden Tiki. <clears throat> Specifically, Cousin 2 wanted to go during their happy hour, because, you know, who doesn't love a good happy hour? And this was the place where I had the one and only alcohol drink of my entire weekend in Vegas. <laughs> and um, if you guys are following me on Twitter, you might recognize, or you might remember, I had posted a, a photo of my drink from here. So. I'm only showing you the menu because we have several things from here. I only had one drink, um, but then we also got some food. And then I have a picture of the drinks that uh, my cousin and uh, her partner got. So I had the Spike Dole soft serve with pineapple vodka. And then cousin two had the piranha punch. Which, let's see, in the photo it says Caribbean Anejo Rum, Apricot Liqueur, Fresh Lemon, Pineapple Orange, and Strawberry Puree. The f this Fruit Ford Punch has bite, and then it had like, it had little, <laughs> little gummy sharks at the top, it was really cute. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. Cousin 2, Cousin 2's partner, um, had the Tiki Mule, which on the menu says, Spiced up version of a traditional mule. Composed of vodka, galanga root, ginger, velvet falernum, and fresh lime, lit on fire for the spritz of absinthe. And I didn't, <laughs> I didn't film with the 
this was the drink where like you know everybody wants to get the video of it because the bartender would like light it on fire and then spray stuff on it and then the, the fire just kind of like lights up and it looks cool but you know my my drink was just a cute little um a cute little dole soft serve I, I realized when I was putting the photos together, the menu probably says Spiked Dole Soft Serve because I think Dole Whip is a copyrighted name. So it's specifically just Dole Soft Serve, not Dole Whip, but it, it's technically Dole Whip TM. Okay, time for the next batch of photos. And also, my music stopped. My music that you can't hear. Which also means if my music stopped, it's time to switch it up again for you guys. Okay, so now let me... Dole Whip is named after the company Dole who sells Whip. Let me clear out these photos for the next batch. <clears throat> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can we do ten? Ah, oh, okay, there we go. Hey, so this is the view of the bar of the Golden Tiki. So very cool. They also had that like. I've only been to, well, counting this one, I've only been to two tiki bars, and this one, kind of, um, kind of similar but also different. Obviously, similar vibes, but the the first one that I've been to, it's built in a way to look like you're on, you're in the like underside of a ship. This one is just like a bar, just like a tiki bar. You can see like some mermaid portraits in the back, a bunch of different lanterns and plants everywhere. <clears throat> oh, and then there's my drink. I try generally when I take photos to take like multiple of the same thing or like at different compositions just to see what I like best. So here's one with my drink. There's that dole. It has a little cute orchid and a um, little umbrella at the top. Yeah, isn't it? So I took one from, uh, I guess, vertical at a vertical composition, and then I took this one, which this one is the one that I. the one that you saw on Twitter, one that I posted. Yeah, this was the only alcohol I had the entire weekend. But boy, it was good. <laughs> that warm versus cold aesthetic. And well, because it was, uh, this was, I guess, like our our night out on the town, kind of. Um, I also dressed up for the occasion, and actually, I. What I was wearing matched the drink, so... <laughs> That's my outfit for the night. <laughs> EOV on the date with Calico, so true. You and me at the Tiki Bar. And I'm listening to you tell me about um, some cool bug facts. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love this button up top. Um, the it's hard to see in this photo, but the pattern that's on it—they're uh, ginkgo leaves. Oh, 
And then you can kind of see in the background on the right, um, there's like this weird like shell thing. It was like a little photo op place that people could go and take photos at. It's like a little miniature stage too. <clears throat> Oh no, you just woke up from your accidental nap? Well, good morning! I hope you got good rest, though. <laughs> I'm telling you about Final Fantasy XIV and the free trial that now also includes the award-winning expansion, Stormblood. <laughs> yes, mm, tell me more while I sip my... my dole. My pineapple vodka dole drink. Oh man, have we almost really been like... Uh, like an almost two hours. And we're still only on day one. Or I mean, the Vegas trip. Because there's a there's something else that I'll, I'll be talking about. But um, I guess to be fair, like... There's definitely a lot more things that are interesting with the Vegas trip versus um, Otter New Year. But like I said, if uh, in the beginning, if you missed it, I was saying Otter New Year is just kind of celebrated all month. Uh, but there is a specific day. It's just, you know, out of out of the entire month, this Vegas trip was probably one of the more interesting things. Or with things that I could actually talk and share about. And let me think. The last time that I was in Vegas, uh, gosh, probably four or more years ago before this recent trip. So there was a lot I hadn't seen. <laughs> yeah, more for you to hear. Oh, I'm trying to not go through it like super fast and also trying to also not like drag on i suppose but yeah let's see oh okay so then there's the tiki mule and then the piranha punch and my drink again let's see my seat reserved for gamers <laughs> Yeah, the the drink on the left, the tiki mule. That one was the one. Yeah, I know you would you would have expected like a cool tiki, like cup, right? But it was lit on fire, so that was that was cool. Yeah, me, I'm a gamer. I game so hard. I'm gaming. Well, not right now, but I game. Yeah, it's lit, or it was lit. I didn't get any personal footage of that, sadly. You'll just have to use your imagination. Pretend it looks cool. It definitely had all of us, like, circled around the drinks and going like, Whoa, fire! Or, <laughs> as uh, Cousin cousin One described it as, What is it with, like, putting fire on drinks or food? We all become, like, cavemen. Like, oh, fire. Bunga bunga, fire. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so then this was some of the food that we got. Bar food. So Cousin 2, uh, Cousin 2's partner had the shrimp cocktail in the back. Um, and then, you know, I mean, we, we all kind of shared a little bit. But I think I was, I mostly took the, the meatballs. So the meatballs are on the right. Um, because, uh, personally, for me, when I drink alcohol, I also have to have water and I also have to eat. Otherwise, I get sick. <laughs> so, I just needed something in my belly. So, I kind of took over the meatballs, and then Cousin 2's partner had the shrimp cocktail, and then Cousin 2 had these chips and dip. So it was like a French onion dip, and, you know, they're just regular, like, like, like potato chips but the potato chips they were sprinkled in like fruity kake like the Japanese rice seasoning and then also like a little drizzle of like honey 
So, and then they also added the furikake to the French onion dip. So it was like a really, really good combination of like texture and like sweet and uh, sweet and savory. Cause like, oh, those chips were like crunchy. And it was just, oh, so good. Probably, I would say I enjoyed the chips more than the meatballs, but the meatballs were like, I just needed that so I, I don't die. Um, and I do believe they were beef, beef meatballs, and the sauce that they were in was like a, like a, like a spicy, savory, I think it was a Szechuan, Szechuan sauce with some scallions you can see at the top. It was like a wild combination. Yeah, but it made me think, like, oh, I can never have like regular chips and dip anymore. Like I have to, I, like putting furikake on chips and dip is such a big brain move. Why have I never thought about that? Was it mostly appetizer foods there? Yeah, just bar food for this place. Um, Cause this was during their happy hour. So we were just there to take advantage of that. Yes, please do. Right? That's what I thought. Oh, okay, so then... I know it looks super dark in the tiki bar, but it's actually not too late yet. So we were driving back to the hotel to grab some things, because we still had some time before our dinner reservation. Um, and we, while we were driving by, we passed by the, um, I think it's the Bellagio? The Bellagio has like these fountains that like uh, every, I don't know, every couple hours or so at night, the fountains will dance to water, like it's like a water show. So I happened to get a quick snapshot of it happening while we were driving past. You know, one of the, I guess it's like one of your standard Vegas things you generally have to take a look at, I think. <clears throat> you know, other than, like, the strip itself. And so then, we went to our next dinner reservation, the last, uh, dinner for... Yeah, our last dinner at, um... In Vegas. So, this was at the Cosmopolitan, and this restaurant is called Beauty in Essex. And so, from the outside, it just looks like your standard pawn shop, just like a lot of jewelries and knickknacks, and there's some, you can kind of see some guitars on the wall. But, there's a door in the back that leads to the restaurant inside. Why, why they do this, like, at a hotel, I don't know because it's just like surrounded by a bunch of other restaurants, so you just kind of assume like that it's a restaurant, but maybe it's just more fun that way, right? Maybe if you don't know, it's like, you just walk by and you're like, why is there a pawn shop in the hotel? But then if you do know, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, secret society club. Yeah, so we we got seated inside, and then it turned out that the server who was serving us, uh, you know, she asked us where we were from, and it turned out she was also from Float Harbor, which was kind of wild. We were talking about um, the food from Float Harbor <laughs> and where where we attended high school and stuff. Kind of crazy. Small, small world. A very, very personable. Very good personality. The exact same Float Harbor? Yeah! So, this photo is of my... another mocktail. Because, you know, I, I didn't have any more alcohol. It was like the one... the pineapple... Um, the Dole soft serve was the one that I... the one alcoholic drink that I had. So, I had another mocktail. Um, the drink that you can see in the back, uh, 
that was Cousin Two's partner's drink. <laughs> that was really weird. It was like a a savory drink. I think on the rim is like tahine. And then I don't remember what alcohol was in it, but it was like a cucumber cucumber base drink. So it was like savory. And my drink my drink was kind of similar to the the mock the other mocktail that I had had. But this one was called the Platinum Peacock, and it had cucumber, Granny Smith apple, pineapple, and mint. Very refreshing. It's hard to imagine a savory drink. Have you ever had, uh, like, a tomato juice? It's kind of like that. Or maybe you'll just have to... <laughs> Make some kind of... <laughs> Have you ever had pho? Mmm, <laughs> yes, pho. My favorite savory drink. Ah, but we've reached another... Ooh, you're gonna go get food for yourself? Sounds good! Thanks for joining! I'll see you later, Chozo. Change the photos again to the next 10. But yeah, Beauty in Essex. Um, so that place required a reservation because of how popular it is. Oh, there was one more. Okay, well, we'll just put it back in. Bye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so the again, Beauty and Essex was like another restaurant where we just ordered like things to share, and they came in like little small quantities of things. <clears throat> and I don't know what would you call it. It's not. I guess it's not particularly fusion. I think it's still American, but it's just like like fancy, it, like experimental kind of cuisine. Yes, they are on soup spoons. So this, this right here, is the grilled cheese, smoked bacon, and tomato soup dumplings. So the soup spoon has a tomato soup, and then this thing at the top, that's a dumpling filled with cheese. And then there's like little bacon bits on top. <laughs> One card cheeseburger. I mean, you're not wrong. Um, you know, I put the the whole thing in my mouth in one bite, and uh, maybe it was just because of the bite that I got. But um, like the first bite that I bit into was like crunchy because of the the smoked bacon, but it was also like kind of hard, like hard, like not not like crunchy. It was just like hard, like a hard bit of like bacon. So um, maybe that's just <laughs> just unfortunate on my part. But I, I, you know, I when I ate it, I was like, well, it's a unique take on eating tomato soup, I suppose. It does taste like tomato soup and grilled cheese, uh, but I would rather just have tomato soup and grilled cheese, like regular, <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead of on a little spoon. Uh, so there was that, and I don't have too much to comment on it other than like it sounds it's exactly what it sounds like. Okay, this one, I didn't get a picture of the initial, like, plating, so this is just my portion. But this was, like, a little French dip sandwich. Um, so, a French dip sandwich is, like, the sandwich that you, you dip in, like, the... It's called au, au jus. It's, like, a type of gravy. Or, like, a soup. soup. It's, like, more like a gravy rather than a soup. Um, but it's, like, beef... 
and then cheese, and I forget what else is in a in a French dip sandwich. Yeah, meat. <laughs> so this is just like a little miniature version of a French dip sandwich. Oh, and then there was also um, horseradish and a garlic aioli, I think. This was pretty good. Uh, Texture-wise, not something I'm super crazy about. It was, it was it was a sandwich, but nothing like, oh, you get the crunchy, you get the soft. Uh, this was just all kind of like same texture throughout. And flavor, uh, flavor was good. It did taste good. It's a good savory little sandwich bite. And then we have this. This is the Mexican street corn ravioli. <laughs> so ravioli, but um, made with Mexican <laughs> Mexican street corn. <laughs> The elote <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Basically elote in a in, in a ravioli form. This was alright. I wish it I could taste the corn more, to be honest. And mostly like when you eat it, it's just mostly the 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 crema and the the and the pasta. It looks dangerous. I think it looks better than it tastes. I wish it was definitely more corn. I wish the I wish the corn had more of a say in this dish. <laughs> corn cheese is a mixed race grandson right here. <laughs> so that's, that's what you get with good old uh, fusion food. Asian food experience. Um, and then, this isn't anything crazy, just some good old sautéed broccolini. And we gotta have some veggies, just a little, just a little veggie. Itty bitty healthy, yeah. After all the the meat we consumed the day before, <laughs> need some some veggie. Scene, hello, welcome. We're uh getting close to the end of the the Vegas trip part, but I still have more to talk about even after the Vegas portion, because I gotta talk about Otter New Year. Yeah, so this, um, this is, right now, I'm currently talking about, you're in Vegas right now? Oh my gosh, you could go to this place. What the, what a coincidence. So this place, if you have the time, and you can make a reservation, and you feel like, uh, spending a couple moolah, oh, you're going at it. ooh, good luck, competing at jujitsu. Exciting. Well, maybe uh, depending on how you do, you can reward yourself. <laughs> you can re reward yourself if you make the reservation. You're willing to spend the money. Um, this restaurant is called Beauty, Beauty and Essex at the Cosmopolitan. It's uh, American fusion esque food. <clears throat> Though you happen to come upon probably the like least interesting dish is just broccolini <laughs> yeah jujitsu them to death we're rooting for you zine Boat harbor aquarium guests are rooting for you um but this broccolini came out around the same time as i think the best thing that we ate uh for the night the beef wellington I should have taken a picture of the the cross cut, the cross section. 
but this is what it looked like when it came to us on the table. It had a nice sprig of thyme at the top. Uh, the, the breading was like not crunchy per se, but it had a it had a bit of a, a chew and the, the beef inside was like cooked perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a, a bunch of stuff here at this place. <clears throat> My goodness. I haven't talked this long um, in a while, so sorry I have to keep clearing my throat. <laughs> yeah, fancy. And then, so when we were... <clears throat> excuse me. When we were looking at the menu, we ordered everything at once, and then the food just kind of came as, you know, we were going through the course. So on the menu, I was looking at the dessert, and, you know, they had, like, you know, your cheesecake, your... Um, like your panna cotta, your mm, ice cream, but there was a thing at the bottom. It cries from hot ginger water. Oh, I know. It, if it wasn't gonna take too long, I would. <laughs> uh, but at the very bottom, there was a thing that said Beauty's Wonder Wheel, and it said it was meant for two or more people and it was the chef's choice. So I had asked the server like, yo, what is this beauty wonder wheel? Because it says chef's choice. So I'm thinking, is it like, is it like, is it a wheel as in like it's a roulette? Like am I, am I just kind of gambling my luck and the, the chef is just gonna give me like something random for dessert? Like it's just his choice and I have no say in the matter. Um, but it turns out, it's actually... Da -da -da -da. It's a wheel with desserts on it! <laughs> so each little cup has a different dessert, and the, the each, um, each thing was a different pick uh, of the chef's choice. <clears throat> yeah, it was really cute. Doesn't it look cool? And it actually spins, like, you can actually spin it around. Um, you know, you can't see everything in here, but, uh, if I can remember a couple of the things. There were, yeah, there was, like, brownies and cookies, there's macarons, there was, like, um, an e I didn't take- I should've, but I didn't take a picture of each thing in there. There was, like, a apricot, like, gummy that was I wish was more gummy and less like it was kind of that like was it was like hard to hold it was more like a jello like an apricot jello um and then there were also like little uh not brownies I guess like a something like a with the fudge like consistency but it wasn't fudge it was like or I guess it's still f considered fudge. Because it's it has the same consistency as fudge. Like, I realize fudge doesn't have to be just chocolate. But yeah, a lot of different little desserts. And I have another picture of, at a different angle. Oh yeah, there's, there was cream, cream puffs too. So, I think the best thing out of this wheel... Um, I l really liked... Here you can see beneath the cream puff, these cookies. These are just like little oatmeal cookies, and I thought the oatmeal cookie would be like probably the most boring thing because of how oatmeal cookie, but these oatmeal cookies were actually pretty dang good. They had like a very soft texture, um, and then they had like this nice cream in the middle, so it was like an oatmeal cookie sandwich. Oh, it was, it was good. Um, and then I think the most interesting thing was the the apricot jello gummy thing and then i don't know what it's called but they had some sort of like almond uh like very strong like almond based dessert i think that's the thing that i was thinking of that i thought was fudge but it's like a it's not 
marzipan, is it? I might be confusing them. But, yeah, anyways, that was, <laughs> that was our dessert. We actually debated a lot and went back and forth on this, um, because cousin one didn't want to they were like oh i had such a good dinner i don't know if i want to gamble and take a risk at getting like something boring from the dessert wheel you know because it's chef's choice and when the server described uh described it to us as like what kind of desserts we might get in the wheel she was like but what if we just get all the duds <laughs> you know I, I wouldn't want to end the dinner disappointed and um unfortunately for <laughs> for her i feel like because we we each would like split each thing that was in the wheel and i feel like for a good percent of the time that we were eating like each little thing i would look over and cousin one would just have like <laughs> you'd be like scrunching her face because she didn't like whatever she was eating and, I, and every time i was just like oh sorry and we go to the next thing she like gives me a piece of something that she's about to eat. I watch her eat it. She makes a face again, and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when in Vegas, you gamble. You gotta gamble a little bit. <laughs> I will say, you know, the desserts were probably not like the most amazing, but the this like the way that it came out, like the display, it was just so cool. And, you know, I, I'd rather have a, vari a, a variety of, like, a bunch of little things than have having to order, like, one dessert. Even though I know I would have been happy with, like, one dessert, because it's probably going to be really good. <laughs> Calico 8. Yeah, that's right. I ate a lot. Um, you know, I... When I, when I looked over, because we were waiting for our food, and then I saw someone bring over the dessert wheel to some other table, and I was like, whoa, I want that. I want a picture of that. <laughs> so, dessert's maybe not the most revolutionary thing, uh, but, you know, it came out, and it was cool, and it was fun to spin the wheel. <laughs> to pick out the desserts from the baskets. And uh, I'm pretty sure that was the last thing that we ate for that day. And so then we just went back to the room and called it a night. And um, because of the storm, uh, well, I mean, even before the storm, uh, Cousin One was saying that we should leave Vegas early to avoid the traffic. So not only was it good to avoid the traffic, but we were also leaving on time so that we wouldn't get caught in the middle of the storm that was going to be passing you through. Or the hurricane. Sorry, not just a storm, it's a hurricane. Alright, so we're trying to outrun this hurricane and get back home uh, safely. <clears throat> so, we woke up super, super early and we went to... Um, this is Sadel's at the Bellagio. And we were taking breakfast to go home, or to eat on the drive home. Oh, thank you, Alice, and welcome! I didn't say hello. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm very fortunate that uh, my cousins have a lot of experience going to Vegas, so I just got to tag along and enjoy all the benefits. <laughs> So yeah, it's, you see, it's like, so this little to-go um, cart, or like stand, is actually inside the restaurant itself, um, called Sadell's, and I'll show you another picture. So this is from the other side of the cart, you can kind of see the Bellagio Gardens, and then the the rest of the restaurant, which is like empty at this point, because it was like, <laughs> like 6 in the morning when we got there. But I thought it was very cute. It's like very pink and blue. Feels very um, 
as cousin one described it, Marie Antoinette vibes, which I agree with. You know, a shame we couldn't, like, sit down and eat. Oh, and also, um, because we had arrived separately, it was just me and cousin one um, getting breakfast and then leaving because we had to drive back. Cousin 2 and Cousin 2's partner, uh, they were sleeping in because they had flown in, so their flight wasn't until later. <laughs> yeah, got them resized vibes. <laughs> My storytelling, kind of just like fumbling all over the place, to be honest, but hopefully it's entertaining. It's giving Europe? So true, bestie. Especially the gardens. I didn't take any pictures of the gardens, but they also change up the display of the gardens every once in a while. You can kind of see, like, there's these big old butterflies and, like, flowers and stuff. And when you walk through, they have, like, little vents that spray, like, um, like a scent. Like a, like a perfume, kind of. But it's very pleasant. It smells like flowers. You know, like you're walking through a garden. But, so... Yeah, we, we got our... Oh, I gotta change up the photos again, because we've reached the 10 photo limit once again. But I'm just glad, you know, the Image Slides show actually works on OBS. It just has some limitations, unfortunately. Okay. So now... Where are we? One. Oh, we're on our last photos for Vegas. So this was um, the so the previous photo that I showed where I was like kind of beside the cart. Yeah, isn't the shell chair cute? This little corner, this like little waiting area for people who are waiting for their to go food. That was very cute. And then the the, the to go bag is also very cute. Like the whole like again mint and pink theme and the flowers. <laughs> No, I did not steal it, but I'll, I'll steal it in my mind. I'll save it for a rainy day. Someday I will have a shell chair. But yeah, uh, the reason why like the bag is so big too is because we weren't just ordering breakfast for ourselves. Cousin one was also bringing stuff home to take to their work because they were going to go to work later that day, like after we got back home. So that's why it's so big. And I, I have two photos of this because, I, you know, horizontal composition, I was like, eh, it's, it's cute. Um, but I think to really get a good look at that whole corner, you need like the, the vertical, vertical shot of it. So you can really see like how tall those flowers are. So the view from the the window out here, uh, to the right, you would get a view of um, the Bellagio pool. Which again, uh, didn't have a chance to go out swimming because of the hurricane. But, you know, at least I got to go to the spa, so that was nice. <laughs> <clears throat> and so, this was in the car with my breakfast. This is what I got. I got the Sadel's Western Omelette, uh, which had peppers, onions, and ham. And you can see it's like very different in comparison to the first omelette that I had from day one. The texture was different. It felt more like akin to like, um, like cakey. Whereas the, the omelette that I had the first day was more like a traditional omelette. And also, this is just <laughs> this is just my little my personal nitpick. Like, I don't really like how they diced up the ham and the peppers and the onions to all be the same size, like little cubes. I wish I had had it more like different variety of sizes of things. Uh, the the potatoes were good though. I did like the potatoes. 
And then I also had something called a grapefruit brulee. And so what this is, it's basically just like half a grapefruit. They scoop out all the insides of the grapefruit and they put the insides off to the side and let it marinate in its own juice. So it's just grapefruit soaking in juice and I guess like some a little bit of sugar. And then they take the grapefruit insides, and they put it back in the grapefruit shell, they sprinkle a little more sugar on top, and then they brulee it, and then put a little mint. <laughs> oh, I'm great with unintentionally having variety of sizing when I chop stuff. <laughs> yeah, marinating in its own juice, that's literally what the guy told me when I asked him, like, what in the world is a grapefruit brulee? Looks like tuna sashimi and spicy mayo. <laughs> Yeah, so like the, the top had like a, a crunchy layer, kind of like a creme brulee, right? But then the inside is just like, ooh, juicy, soft grapefruit. And very, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of grapefruit, like by itself, because every time I've had a grapefruit, I feel like it's just so sour, or there's like always a sour aftertaste. But this was like a perfect balance of like, I guess the sugar and having it marinate in its own juice makes it like sweeter somehow because it wasn't it, it didn't have that sour aftertaste <laughs> the chef was like let it cook for real yeah I don't like the bitterness of grapefruits <laughs> yeah I think grapefruits are visually very appealing and they smell great but I would not go out of my way to just have fresh grapefruit. Yeah, so this was again taken in the car uh, on the way back home to Float Harbor. And again, remember we're trying to race, we're trying to beat the hurricane before it hits Float Harbor. Um, so we, I didn't get a picture of when we were driving through it initially, but we got caught up in some like very thick fog. And this was like immediately after we left the foggy area. But you can see how dense and how low it is to the ground. Very cool and kind of scary, just a little bit. But the traffic was, um, you know, we avoided the biggest part of the traffic. The, the only grapefruit you know is the meme? No. <laughs> Alden. <laughs> Yeah, literally racing against the storm. For real, for real. But, uh, we made it home. I was surprised, because I thought I was gonna knock out in the car, but I actually was awake up until, like, the last hour. Um, and I think that's the last hour to 30 minutes is when I fell asleep and then I woke up, um, just as we were reaching the end of, uh, our drive. So, um, when we got back to uh, Cousin One's house, um, my aunt was like, Oh, are you hungry? Like, I'll make you some, um, I'll make you something to eat. And also, I have this box of Porto's cheese rolls. I have too many, please take them home. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. But uh, what I ended up eating before I drove home to the Corium was this. This is kaupun. And kaupun is a Lao soup. It's like, um, kind of like a curry. I use the term curry lightly, but it's like a very flavorful soup. Typically there's more coconut in it, which is where the curry-ishness comes from. And also the noodles are supposed to be like thicker, but um, my aunt only had like pho noodles. So we had pho noodles and this kalpun. And then there's pork and then cabbage and green onion in it. So this was very nice. Also rainy, rainy day weather food. Also, if you want to look up like a, a recipe or like read more about kapun um, on your own, it's spelled K H A O P O O N. 
yes, yeah, so this uh, this broth didn't have as much coconut in it. Um, typically, I would. I, I like it when there's more coconut, but cousin one likes it lighter when it's not as heavy with the coconut. <laughs> but yeah, this was, this was so nice after a long drive. Um, and then, so, <laughs> I'm sorry, Noni. <laughs> yeah, Porto's is delicious. How can you know how to spell it? <laughs> so yeah, after I had, um, lunch, I drove back home to the aquarium from Cousin One's place with my box of Porto's cheese rolls. And then when I got home, I told myself, okay, Calico, you've already had, like, a ton of food this weekend. You've got to, like, chill out. And then, at the same time, my dad came home, Papa Pascal, and he was like, we're gonna make hamburgers! And I was like, alright. <laughs> I'll do it after today. So, uh, no picture, but I had a I had a hamburger, and then I had a Porto's cheese roll, <laughs> too. Calico confirmed royal capoon is a royal dish. Is it really? <laughs> Even I did not know that. Yeah, hamburger, burger, burger, and that was the end of my Vegas trip. But, there's still more, I have still more to talk about. So that was... Uh, that was one weekend. And then the second week that I didn't stream... <coughs> ...is because I was celebrating Otter New Year! So... Let me... ...preface again. A uh, preface again, because I... ...talked about it at the beginning of the stream, which was now, like, nearly two hours ago, but, um, oh, I only have room for ten photos, so let's do it like this. We'll, do, we'll split it up. So, Otter New Year. Um, I personally celebrate Otter New Year all month, but there is a specific day. <laughs> Thank you! Happy belated Otter New Year to you, too. Um, but Otter New Year... It's kind of like... It's kind of like New Year, I guess, if you had to compare it to, uh... To a... To another holiday. Otter New Year is kind of just like... New Year and also, like, Thanksgiving. Uh, just because... Um, yeah, there is a light blue heart. I like using the light blue heart emo emoji. Those are like my, my two heart emojis, yellow and light blue. Um, but Otter New Year, uh, you know, um, like, like a regular New Year, you kind of celebrate having reached a whole year around a, a whole sun cycle, right? Um, but also, uh, you know, it's cooler than Thanksgiving because I I like to take my time and uh, at least for me, it's very important uh, to spend time with the people you care about for Otter New Year. Uh, quality time is very important to me, so that's why, you know, that's why I was gone for so long and that's why I didn't edit was because my my relatives from overseas came over, so I wanted to spend time with them while they were here. I got to see... Uh, I visited Mama Pascal, and um, I... What else did I do? Oh yeah, obviously I, I went to Vegas with my other cousins. Uh, and then yeah, this, this was the day of Otter New Year. Um, and that was a- I had a, a whole day planned for Otter New Year, so I invited a lot of- specifically my- my intentions were to invite both old friends who have been with me for a long, long time, um, and introducing them to new friends who I had just made very recently. Because, you know, they- they're- they're all people 
that I care about and I, and I think that, you know, they would get along. Um, so I just wanted them to hang out. Uh, specifically, I, I treated them all to drinks and dessert from my favorite place. And uh, I also <laughs> I made them party favors, which uh, they they kept telling me like, wait, why are you giving us stuff on Otter New Year? Aren't <laughs> isn't it supposed to be the other way around? And I was like, no, 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 no. This is it's Otter New Year. You gotta you gotta let me show you my gratitude for being. Uh, a part of my life. So, uh, actually, I again, yeah, I didn't have photos. I woke up in the morning, and then I was supposed to go to the gym, uh, but I ended up sleeping in a little bit and then <laughs> just putting myself behind schedule just a tiny bit. So I I went to the gym, like for what like 30 minutes, and then I like left. Uh, so all I did that day was cardio, and then. I, uh, I went back to the aquarium and then I met up with one of my one of my best friends. They came over and I took us to meet up with my other best friend, and we went to uh, another like beach city outside of Float Harbor. Um, and we went to this cafe, and it's inside a lighthouse. So this was the outside. It's the lighthouse you can see. And then this is what the inside of the lighthouse looks like. And they just have more photos of lighthouses inside. Yeah, I actually had been uh, recommended this place through Yelp. So Yelp kind of figured out like, hey, you, you seem to like places like this. And I think this is right up your alley. And I was like, Yelp, how did you know? You read me like a book. Lighthouseception. I thought your New Year is a fascinating culture. Well, that's why I'm here to tell you all about it. But yeah, so... You're a lighthouse of my life? Aww. Yeah, balls. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually don't have too many photos uh, from this day because, you know, I was having too much fun, but I tried to take photos when I remembered to. So I mostly have photos from uh, here and then the middle of the day gets kind of like, kind of a bit of a blur and then after that I have a little more photos. <clears throat> so uh, this uh, cafe. I think it's also American, American cuisine. And so I was looking at the menu, and then the server came by, and then he told us actually that there was a secret item on the menu for that day, which was what I ended up ordering. Uh, but I think this photo is, yeah, this is not it. But as you can see, look, here's me. It's me, and then the drink that I got, which was, um, I forgot to write it down. Uh, some sort of like orange, like a fancy orange juice. <laughs> BB Pascal. <laughs> yeah, shiny, shiny Pascal. You little shiny Pascal. And then some, some of the gifts that I got for Otter New Year. Which, by the way, gifts are like totally not necessary. But my friends, they, they, <laughs> they insisted on getting me stuff. So this is my, my fancy orange juice. Calismol Pascal. <laughs> Did I catch a, a shiny one? Hmm. Good question. Maybe she made a rare she made a rare appearance for Otter New Year. So she was here to indulge. Had some fancy orange juice. And then a cup of clam chowder, which the server said. I think this place has the best clam chowder in the world, and we were like, that's a bold claim. We'll have some. <laughs> uh, I can't, you know, I, I haven't had clam chowder from around the world, so I can't verify if this is the best clam chowder in the world, but it was pretty good clam chowder. And, you know, 
I, I always love little oyster crackers with my clam chowder. Also, you can you never will ever get to see my hand this up this up close, but I have a little a mole on my thumb. A mole. <laughs> For free? <laughs> not in a sourdough bowl. Then it's not the best. You know, that's true. I really do like clam chowder and bread bowls. Closest hand we've ever seen. Yeah, you get a good up close and personal look at the claws. Actually, let me switch up the music again. I think it's been about an hour or so. Then, this was the secret menu, or the secret item that was on the menu, or not on the menu, sorry. Uh, and it was, I feel like, it's made specifically for me, as if they knew I was going to be there. <coughs> it was a seafood omelette. So there was scallops, there was crab, um, and some other things. There was some cheese in it. You got some sliced avocado on top. <laughs> some, uh... Skillet potatoes? Skillet? Skillet potatoes? And then toast? Yeah, it was like... You were like, for me? True. Even, uh, shiny... Shiny Cali gets a bite, too. And also, portion was gigantic. This was like a big, heavy omelet. It was closer to like the traditional omelet uh, that I had in Vegas, but it was like definitely way heavier, I guess because of all the crab and the like the scallops in it. <laughs> uh, and you know, we we didn't stick around too long after that, we, we had our food and then we decided like, oh we can walk around a little bit outside the lighthouse. So this is the view from outside of the lighthouse. There's like a little a little beach and a port. You can see all the little boats. But as you can see, sky clear as day. The hurricane is gone. Not not a cloud in sight. Very nice weather for Otter New Year. <laughs> and so after this, uh my two besties and I, we went and got ice cream, which was not on the docket of things that I had initially planned, but uh, we ended up getting ice cream uh, because we were waiting for the karaoke lounge to open. And we did karaoke for like two hours, and that was really fun because uh, my two best friends and I had talked about doing karaoke together, like forever and ever and ever and ever, and we just never got around to doing it. So we finally got to do it uh, on Otter New Year, which I think was very special. Oh, Housequaker, welcome! You missed all of the Vegas portion, but, um, you know, I'm still talking about uh, Otter New Year now. So, um, this portion is going to be a lot shorter, but... Oh, go-to karaoke song? Hmm. Hmm. Hey. I feel like... Hmm. I don't know if I have one specific song that I always default to. I have a couple that I, like, pick. <laughs> More Cali P covers and songs. Oh, good news for you. GTG. I might have something in my my special otter pocket <laughs> for the near or far future. You like obsessed by Mariah Carey? House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't think to take any photos of the karaoke uh, karaoke spot or the ice cream. I kind of inhaled the ice cream really fast. Which, by the way, I'm sorry, Alden. I had. Porchata ice cream. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and most of the songs that we sang at karaoke were just like anime songs. We didn't venture too far off into like the, um, the English song tier. We are mostly just singing a lot of Japanese songs. It's a fun song. Feel fun. I love singing Love by uh, Keisha, Keisha Cole. Mmm. You love horchata, GTG? Let's go. Sorry, Alden. <laughs> uh, you know, I... I wanted to sing... It was a last. Yes, we did sing Snow Halation, actually. We sang a qu uh, quite a few Love Life songs. Uh, though I wanted... I wanted to sing... Um, the Neon Genesis Evangelion opening as like the last song. Not like that I intentionally wanted to sing it as the last song, it was just kind of like, oh, our two hours are almost over, so I want to sing this song before it's uh, before the time is up. And then for some reason the karaoke machine was like, nah, you're done. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't get to, I didn't get to sing Neon Genesis. Oh yeah, I did. Uh, we did sing some Yoasabi too. I wish you could have joined us, Alice. For the karaoke, but that just means, you know, the, in the future, <laughs> sing it in the car. No, um, I, I was trying to save my vocal cords for the rest of the night. Bell pepper exercises? What are bell pepper exercises? I don't know what that is. Is that is that good? Is that good for your... Is that good for singing? I think this next photo... Um, yeah, because... Yeah, because I didn't get any pictures of the ice cream or the karaoke, uh, it was then time for dinner, which... And then more friends started showing up. Oh! The <laughs> I was like, what's a bell pepper exercise? Okay, I know what you're talking about now. So true. I should have done the Arimakana song. Uh, but yeah, then we we went and had dinner, and I only remembered to take a to take a picture. I only remembered to take a picture after we had already like gone through everything. So <laughs> here's like some of the remains of the the things that we ate. Um. And there was some pokoki, some kimchi fried rice, and then a seafood pancake. More seafood, because you know that's just that's just how you gotta roll when you're celebrating Otter New Year. You can't go wrong with seafood. <laughs> yeah, so much soju. We had three gigantic bottles of soju. We had peach, mango, and yogurt, and somehow we finished the whole thing. A I... Wasn't keeping count of how many sh shots I had, uh, but to be fair, since I hadn't drank much alcohol during Vegas, I felt like this was okay. And also, it's Otter New Year, so that's another pass for me. And we also found out, you know, the each soju was good on their own, but if you mixed them up with, like, if you mixed one of the fruit ones with the yogurt one, they tasted so good. Oh, my BGM stopped again. Please continue. <laughs> <clears throat> Soju and Korean food are always such a good combo. Yes. You can't go wrong having all of that together. Yeah, everything was delicious. Um, I actually would have eaten more than I did that night, but... I was saving room for dessert because that was like the main thing that I was waiting for all day, which is the thing that I had invited all my friends for. Uh, again, to celebrate and thank them for spending the day with me or just coming out um, out of their way to spend Otter New Year with me. So, let me pull up the next pictures. Because. Now the remaining pictures are gonna be the stuff from Otter or the the cafe. 
Yeah, I know, another cafe. I can't help myself. I just love cafes. So this was a photo that I posted on Twitter. This was... My birth... My Otter New Year cake. Yeah, we, we put shiny shiny Cali on on top. Steamed perfectly for me. Got the got the ocean waves and the the sand on the, the cake is like um the coconut. Dried coconut and then like little white chocolate seashells. Rosa's birthday cake, we stand friend of the stream Rosa. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad you like it. And actually, good news for anyone who's uh, who didn't who doesn't have a little miniature calico. Would you want a little miniature calico? Well, I have. I may or may not have a bunch of extra ones, and I may or may not be handing them out to buddies and buddies of buddies. Um, at a certain event, and potentially online eventually. So you may be able to get your hand on one. The third generation buddies. Yeah, those are the friends of my friends of my friends. Uh, but also, so the, the inside of this cake was pineapple coconut. Curated just for me for Otter New Year. And also, you can see the name of the cafe on this little chocolate piece. It is my current favorite cafe at the moment. So I highly recommend you go to visit if you can. Oh, really? Mmm. I don't know how late uh, the event runs, but if you go, it'd be nice to see you. Anyways, this was this was my perfect little Otter New Year cake. I couldn't have asked for a more perfect cake. It is just when I saw it. So the the cafe before Otter New Year, they posted uh, they posted like a an Instagram story, and they were like, "We got these new themed cakes that you can order," um, and I was like. I know what I need. I know what I must do. So I I was like, please, I must have this cake for Otter New Year. It's of the utmost importance to me. And they were so sweet. They also gave us a, a big old fruit bowl, which I did not take a photo of. Oh, hey, Kiart. Welcome. 11 to 8? Okay. So House Quaker, you might have some time. Hopefully that's not too early for you. Learn to work to save up for a trip. Oh, good luck, Owls. You'll have to tell me about your trip when you're able to go. But yeah, I I don't have too many photos of like everybody's drinks and desserts, uh, but I do have. Oh, this- okay, so this one is another- another photo, uh, from, uh, this was taken by a f my- my- one of my besties. Of so I- I like- I like their- their photo of it, because it's very, like, you can see how bright the blue is on the cake. Like, the- the filter on this one kind of, like, desaturated it just, like, a tiny bit. But this one is, like, I think more true to what it actually looks like in person. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, there's... There's this, and then... You know. And me and BB Cali. Oh, and then here's some of the desserts and drinks that I got. Uh, so, 
in the foreground here, this those are that drink and that dessert belong to the the person who was taking the photo. And then the dessert in the back and the drink in the back were for me. So mine was a uh, passion fruit cheesecake. I love passion fruit. Uh, passion fruit is like guava, passion fruit, coconut, uh, basically like <laughs> tropical fruits. It's just my my favorite, my go-to. So passion fruit, a little passion fruit cheesecake, and it was shaped. It was a little heart shape. It was so cute. Um, and then the the drink that I had it was like a blended pineapple yogurt drink. It's so nice and yellow. Yeah, very on theme. Which I was saying because I did have a few people ask me after like, uh, you know, Calco, how was Otter New Year this year? And I said, um, I feel like it's probably the best Otter New Year that I've celebrated in a long time, just because I feel like. Over the course of time, I've gotten to know myself better and what I like. I mean, not that, not that I never, not that I never um, celebrated Otter New Year to my taste in the past. But you know, I, I think uh, having having had the time to reflect on a lot of things and also spending it with people who I feel like I made special connections with um, definitely made a difference because they were like the people that I chose to share connections with, if that makes sense. So it was just like all my favorite people with in like with a bunch of who who would not be happy being surrounded by like little cute drinks and desserts and uh in a in a nice cute little environment so it made me happy that people could come and join me for honor new year and then you know there there were a few a couple people who couldn't make it for like one reason or another last minute but they still like went out of their way to to let me know, like, hey, happy Otter New Year! Like, I'm sorry I couldn't make it, but um, I hope we can hang out later and celebrate together on our own time. And that, and that, that, uh, that alone is enough to make me happy. So I'm just, uh, it was just like a really good, really good Otter New Year, and yeah, best, best one in a long, long time. Um, and I think it's perfect because. You know, just the the timing of it all. Not that the timing changes. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same day every year, same time of the year. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It is just very special, and I am very thankful for those people in my life. And here's another <laughs> another photo. Before I, I started devouring this cake. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I was I was almost like <laughs> not not that I thought that anyone would put the spotlight on me, but I was like, it, should I like say something while everybody's here? Uh, but then I was like, well, I'm gonna talk about it on stream later, later anyways, so. I knew you guys would be able to hear about it from me one way or another later. And I think if if I had been put on the spot to talk about my feelings on the day of, I probably would have just like cried my eyes out. <laughs> so it's better this way. Um, let's see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this this was um as I also posted on Twitter. <laughs> this was I had gotten a little letter from one of my friends who I invited to Otter New Year and I turned it around and there was this beautiful 100% accurate 
<laughs> photo of me. And you know, I had after this, there was no way I couldn't be like, okay, well now I have to show off. Because I, I hadn't flexed all day for the people. <laughs> so I showed off the gains a little bit. <laughs> to be honest, I probably should have done it more, but I was uh, I was too distracted. In fact, it was like so distracted to the point that like I was told by several people, can you please just like sit down and enjoy Otter New Year? Stop like running around. <laughs> Stop giving us things. This like we should be treating you on Otter New Year. <laughs> Uh, but, um, I can't help it. <laughs> I just, I just need the, the host, the host in me, the hostess, host, hostess in me just wants to make sure that everybody is comfortable and having a good time. So, yeah, and, uh, I hit, oh, I, sh I, sh you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up because I didn't add it in here. But when I got home, I think, like, the next day? Or maybe even the day of. Let me see. I got a surprise. A surprise. Is this, is it this? I got a surprise drawing from another friend for Otter New Year. I was like, oh my gosh. This is so unexpected. Wow. Yeah, she drew me so cute! She makes me so happy. And actually, the- so the funny thing about uh, this friend in particular, um, a long time ago, before I started um, streaming at all, I had become mutuals and friends with another VTuber named Boomba. Boomba is a caveman VTuber. I like his streams. You should go check him out someday. Um, I, I will have to look him up on Twitter, but uh, to know his like full username. But his name is Boomba, and Boomba and I, um, yes, Boomba. When we when we followed each other, I saw that my friend who drew this picture, they were mutuals, and I was like, how? How do you know my friend? Like that's like that's kind of like like extremely small coincidence, or I mean very large coincidence, very small world. And he told me that they had been friends for like ever, and I was like, what? Whoa, that's so wild. So we we bonded over a, a little bit, being like, wow, we're we're we're, we're we have some mutual friends. And so, I was very, very ecstatic to receive this lovely little drawing by Mew. <laughs> yeah, and then that's all I wanted to talk about for today. New Saturn New Year and uh, Vegas. And again, um, for those who joined in late, <coughs> Otter New Year is celebrated all month, and I spent a lot of time, you know, that's why I wasn't streaming for the past two weeks. Because I had my my relatives from overseas, a different ocean, they came by to Float Harbor, so I was spending time with them, so I didn't get to edit the vlog I initially wanted to have done. Um, and then, you know, they were staying with... Um, they were staying with Mama Pascal, so I got to see Mama Pascal, too, before Otter New Year, and we celebrated Otter New Year together early. Oh, even before that, I celebrated Otter New Year with Papa Pascal and my, my little brother, PJ. So, yeah, literally this, this whole month was just me spending time with the people that I love. <laughs> yeah, and it just so happens to be the last day of the month, so a good old summary of it all. <laughs> yeah, big, big, busy month. Uh, now... Mm. Yeah, what? How am I... Ooh, you know... Um, I mean, maybe 
I'll talk about it, or maybe I won't. I don't know. Uh, maybe next stream, because... Mm, no, because I just did. Today's been a just chatting stream. I think next week I should try to play a game, but, you know, I can probably talk about... I might talk about um, this upcoming weekend. Because right after this stream is over, I have to go pack for something else. I know, but it's the end of Otter New Year, but I'm still not done partying. <laughs> I, uh, I've got places to be. Um, I'm actually... It's more like a staycation, but um, I have... I have friends from out of town who are visiting Float Harbor, so I gotta show them what it's like. Feels people to see, places to be. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I think I, you know, maybe I'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. I'll get, I can at least say, um, I'll be getting to meet Dr. Hakase in person. He and I will be able to meet in the flesh. So that'll be exciting. <laughs> And what else? Yeah, I guess maybe I kind of want to play um, Spirit Fair next week. So I hope you guys would be down for that. Unless I find a different game. We haven't played Spirit Fair in a bit. And it's that's a good game to just kind of like do stuff while talking in the background. <laughs> Doom Eternal. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, perfect timing, too, on how long it took to get through all the photos and talk about everything, because I was like, okay, there's, I can't stream and talk for, like, ever, because I have stuff to do. So, thanks for popping in whenever you came in, or if you've been here since the beginning of the stream, thanks for joining me. <clears throat> oh, my, my voice is just like, it's fading! <laughs> I'm not used to talking for three hours straight. Ah. No, it's so not nearly as good as the first, left me a little flat. Oh, Doom Eternal. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, thanks for joining! I hope it was fun. Hope the... I hope the photos were interesting. I'm sorry my... <clears throat> I'm sorry my storytelling is like kind of all over the place, but uh, you know. It is what it is. If, like, thank god some some of you were here from like the very beginning and I, I thought I had unmuted and then I wasn't unmuted after all and someone was like, I think it was Keiko and Noni were both just like, I think you're muted. I was like, oh no. Thankfully, I hadn't said too much at that point, so I was just like, okay, thank goodness. But uh, <laughs> for, I was having, because I, so this morning, uh, to sum it up briefly and quickly, this morning I played Fall Guys with Dr. Hakase and his community on his stream, so you could go watch that. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then after that, I was just prepping for my stream tonight, uh, and that involved putting the photos together and then also looking online and trying to find and remember like everything that I had ordered and what was in it. Um, and then for some reason, the image slideshow on OBS, um, you know, I realized it was limited because I had like a bajillion photos to go through, but they would only allow like 10 at a time. And then depending on like if you directed which photos you wanted in there, or just if you selected like an entire directory, it would just pick random photos, which was kind of annoying. So I was like, okay, well if this isn't gonna work, I should try just like looking at um, my photos via like the the Windows preview, like the way that you can preview your own images and documents on on your computer. But then the Windows capture wasn't capturing the the window. And so I was like, okay, well, what if I 
take all these photos and I just open them in Photoshop and then I can just like toggle layers on and off to like look through them. And oopsie me, silly calico, not putting in like 60 plus photos in Photoshop, didn't open one file with all of them in like layers. They opened a bajillion photos, a bajillion different files on Photoshop and I was like, oh no. Um, and this was like er, when I was when I had the uh, stream starting screen up was when Photoshop was like trying to open like <laughs> over 60 photos and I was like, come on, please don't like crash OBS <laughs> while this is happening. Um, but thank God uh, we figured it out. So it's all good. Anyways, oh hi June. Welcome. I'm sorry you you just caught the end, but maybe you can scrub through and look at all the photos really quickly if you don't want to listen to me ramble. <laughs> it's all food photos and a couple photos of me here and there. <laughs> yeah, we made it. I figured it out. I learned how to use OBS Image Slideshow. Hooray! Congrats. Also, um, I don't know about stream numbers specifically, but YouTube was telling me that including videos and live uh, live streams, this stream is the 40th 40th video on the channel. So yippee, 40 views or 40 videos. Yeah. I'm thinking. I want to do. I want to do a, a karaoke stream if we reach 50 videos or if we get to 100 subscribers. I don't know which one's gonna come first, but, uh, karaoke, karaoke stream planned for sure. And then, uh, again, uh, got a couple, a little couple, maybe cover project, cover projects, maybe? Maybe pro song projects in the, in the special otter pocket? Coming to you, who knows when. Uh, they're being worked on. So, yeah. <laughs> Alden <laughs> projects? Question mark. As if you don't know. There's at least one song, or two songs. One. <laughs> okay, wait, I, won't, I won't say more. There's stuff. There's stuff being worked on. When it'll come out, who knows? Uh, but uh, I'll be sure to talk about it and tease them once they're ready. They're they're cooking. You gotta let them cook. So yeah, I hope you guys have a good rest of your night. I've got to pack. I've got things to do besides packing. Um, and then tomorrow is first full day, so yeah, you gotta do the cooking by the book. <clears throat> Audio jungle. If your life is hazy. Okay, anyways. Audio jungle. Alright. I, uh, stream ending screen, still the same as a s stream starting screen, but new music. I put all the links in the description of the new music stuff that I put in today. I thought it'd be nice to have some change, a little change, a little extra. All of, all of which were free to use, thank goodness. Bless your souls. The people who make free to use stuff. You make my life easy. You make everybody's life easy. And so I try to credit where credit is due. So please enjoy this new stream ending song. Free. Yeah, the only uh, the only one commissioned by me is the the just chatting. Not this one that's currently playing. That one was also free. Soda Soda is free. Um, but Umbrella Days is the one that you guys are used to. Anyways, I'm rumbling now, so before it gets any longer, I'll let you guys take a listen, and then I'll catch you all next week. 
So I'll see you later. Have a good night, everybody. Bye bye. Thanks for joining me and happy Otter New Year. Let's celebrate again next year together. Bye.